Hi, I'm Catherine Michael. I'm a mom and IBCLC, which is an international board certified lactation consultant and a fourth, fifth, or sixth year medical student I've taken to maternity leaves. Um, as a lactation consultant and almost physician, it's my responsibility and commitment to spread education about breastfeeding and nutrition and to shine a light on the injustices and inequities that preclude any population of children from getting the highest quality of nutrition. Throughout Black History Month, I did some research on the history of black maternal health and the historical factors that have led to higher maternal and infant mortality and uh, morbidity rates in the black community. As breastfeeding is my niche, I've chosen to focus on this area of inequality. I came across a book called Skimmed, Breastfeeding, Race, and Injustice by Andrea Freeman, and I have been so moved and equally disturbed by the content that I feel compelled to share. The information I'm going to talk about now is from Andrea Freeman's book, and her thorough research and citations can be found there. I'll put a link to the book. In um, the book, it's the story of Annie Mae Fultz, who birthed identical quadruplet baby girls on May 23rd, 1946. Dr. Fred Klenner delivered the babies and the injustice began. First, he took the privilege of naming them after his female family members. Then he tested his vitamin C theory on them with 50 milligram injections at birth. And then he auctioned them off to a formula company to spearhead their advertisements targeting the black community. St. Louis's pet milk won the bid and used the quadruplets to convince black mothers that they need to buy formula to be a good mother. They misled parents into believing that formula was as healthy or healthier than breast milk. Along with the societal pressures saying breastfeeding was sexual and it's insufficient, uh, along with the perpetuating effects of forced wet nursing from back in the days of slavery, which were still pretty recent, black women succumbed to the advertisements, increasing formula sales tremendously more than even pet milk expected. Okay. So that was over 50 years ago, and I'm sure plenty of you are thinking that the effects of those advertisements mustn't still impact us today. There's so much more education, right? Well, now let's fast forward to 1997, less than 25 years ago, which is within my lifetime, when a woman named Tabitha Walrand gave birth to a son named Tyler. Tabitha had birth complications and surgery that led to a several weeks long hospital stay and delayed breastfeeding initiation with Tyler. We know that skin to skin contact and breastfeeding as soon as possible uh, after birth followed by unlimited cluster feeding is crucial for the establishment of latch and milk supply. So doctors, who to this day are notorious for offering different treatment to minority women compared to white women, ignored the risk factors like the surgery and the delayed breastfeeding that Tabitha had for breastfeeding struggles and low milk supply. They discharged her without any counseling or education or help to mitigate these factors. In fact, they reassured Tabitha that her baby would thrive on exclusive breastfeeding. Well, the New York Medicaid offices simultaneously experienced an apparent computer error and that prevented Tabitha from receiving the health insurance card for her baby Tyler that she had sought even before he was born. Because of this, no doctor would see Tabitha and Tyler for a follow-up checkup without the Medicaid card. Baby Tyler died at just eight weeks old from inadequate nutrition while his mother 
was in a taxi taking him to the emergency room. So, you'd expect when she arrives and afterward that doctors and nurses would offer extensive sympathies and support, right? No. Tabitha was prosecuted with second degree manslaughter. This grieving mother was charged with killing her son. So that story is bad enough, right? Well, it gets worse. Formula companies later colluded with CBS to base an episode of the show Chicago Hope on Tabitha and Tyler's story. Their goal was to scare mothers into believing that it is likely that exclusive breastfeeding will not be sufficient nutrition for their newborns and that it could even lead to death. What a way to make formula very attractive, right? Makes it seem like having some backup formula in the closet or topping off with formula to make sure your baby is full is a good idea, right? Is that the worst part of this criminal partnership? No. The show used a white woman as the grieving mother so that she would not be demonized for, for her baby's death, as Tabitha was not just by the doctors and nurses, but by the media and people who got a hold of this story. So they wanted it so that the culprit was breastfeeding, not bad mothering, breastfeeding was the bad guy, and the formula company didn't want subconscious or conscious biases letting viewers blame a black mom easily slid into the bad black mother stereotype instead of exclusive breastfeeding as the problem. Okay, so now that was still over 20 years ago, so people could know better by now and there aren't more injustices occurring, right? Wrong. Let's go to today's issues. Did you know that the federal government, by means of the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, is the single largest buyer of formula in the United States. What do they do with it? They give it away for free through WIC, which is the nutrition program for women, infants, and children to low-income women. This makes formula an easy choice for WIC-eligible women, and WIC participants are much more likely to formula feed than women in the general population. Then, the families who received the free formula while they were on WIC continue to purchase it after their coverage ends, and this benefits the formula companies. WIC is just trying to help though, and those women are more likely to need formula due to their lack of social support and their worse off work situations, right? Well, it may be true that these poorer women also have other factors making formula attractive aside from the fact that it's free, but the federal government has an ulterior motive that we cannot overlook. Something called the Farm Bill incentivizes farmers to produce more corn, dairy, and soy than the consumers need. These are called subsidized commodities, and the USDA is mandated to buy the extra products from these farmers. The USDA redistributes these subsidized commodities by giving away products with them used as the first or a high up ingredient. They do this through the National School Lunch Commodities Program and WIC because guess what the majority ingredients in formula are? You guessed it, corn syrup, dairy, and soy. What's the problem? You know, people need these free products and they benefit, right? Well, that's debatable. 
people who qualify for this government assistance don't really have the luxury of declining it or picking what they want based on its nutritional value. So wouldn't it be unethical to knowingly supply these people with nutrition that could be harmful or without an equally available and accessible alternative without harmful effects? Yes, it is unethical and it is especially serious offense to use this vulnerability of poor families in a way that affects infant nutrition, which has effects to their health for the rest of their life. So, it is unlikely that you're unfamiliar with the differences between formula and breastfeeding and the risks of formula feeding and the benefits of breastfeeding. As we already mentioned, there's lots of information out there. But if this is your first breach of the subject, a quick look at the established research shows, one, that infant taste preferences can persist throughout their life and exposure to formula with high amounts of processed sugar early in life can impact this. Two, the subsequent diet uh, choices lead to higher levels of obesity, type 2 diabetes, and other weight-related conditions. And three, typical bottle feeding techniques, as opposed to paste bottle feeding, can lead to stomach stretching, overfeeding, and increased black, brown fat cells and altered metabolism of protein, which in turn can contribute to the effects in point two, the effects on weight. Because of these undisputed and widely affirmed advantages of breastfeeding, the World Health Organization and UNICEF recommend a minimum of two years breastfeeding while the slightly outdated and politically influenced uh, American Academy of Pediatrics and American College of Obstetricians recommend a minimum of one year. Circling back to the beginning, when I mentioned that the black community suffers higher rates of maternal and infant mortality, what do you think is a large factor in that? Yep, lots of global studies link high infant mortality to low breastfeeding rates. Okay, yeah, Catherine, global, that means it only matters in places like Africa or South America, not the big, rich, powerful United States, right? Hmm. Although breastfeeding has much more drastic effects in developing countries, there is still a ton of improvement to make in the United States, which actually has the highest infant mortality rate among the largest industrial and wealthiest nations. And the infant mortality rate is double for the black community compared to in the white community. There is a problem. Whether you breastfeed or formula feed, have children or don't, are male, female, black or white, you should care. I'm a concerned US citizen, a concerned healthcare provider, a concerned mother. Our government should not have financial interests in formula companies. Our government should not participate in a system that disproportionately negatively affects poor and black communities. Our black neighbors should receive fair, equitable and high quality care from healthcare providers, from government assistance programs, and from corporations. It's just as bad, if not worse, for a corporation to be racist as opposed to an individual. To conclude, <clears throat> Andrea Freeman says it best in her book, quote, formula can provide nutrition for infants whose caregivers face the challenges of illness, poverty, employment demands, punitive welfare requirements, inadequate workplace conditions, and lack of lactation support. But despite these advantages, formula can harm infants while providing none of the substantial benefits of breastfeeding. Breastfeeding reduces the risk of suffering from 68 different conditions, including ear, respiratory, and blood infections, sudden infant death syndrome, cancer, asthma, 
diabetes, diarrhea, and impaired speech, language, motor, and brain development. In short, from a purely infant health-focused perspective, formula is unequivocally inferior to breast milk. When it's needed, formula is a lifesaver. But when it isn't, all infants should have equal access to the benefits of breastfeeding. All parents should have a real informed choice about how to feed their infants. Her disclaimer is also excellently stated. <clears throat> I quote, this book and my post, Urgent Call for Structural Reform, is rooted in the imperative to create genuine, universal choices about infant feeding. Its advocacy and analysis come with no judgment. We're here to make a difference and make opportunities available, not to shame or to hurt or to blame or to guilt, okay? So I hope you hear this and honestly, I hope it shocks you. I hope it kind of enrages you and I hope you become an advocate for uh, parental care, education, and equity across our country. Thanks for watching.